What common practice has no actual purpose? Saying bless you. When somebody sneezes. Do you want to be possessed by vampires? Vampires aren't real. Don't be daft. The real purpose of saying bless you when someone sneezes is so their soul doesn't escape their body. When random people say bless you after I sneeze. I tell them that it's unnecessary since I lost my soul years ago. Not putting elbows on the table while eating. It's much more comfortable easy to eat as some things with elbows on table provided said table isn't too crowded. Edit. Wording. Sometimes when my girlfriend is sitting at the table having her coffee I get out my flaccid penis and flop it onto the table and drag it across like a slug. She gets upset when this happens. Goddamn daylight saving time. It's the shift back to standard time that I can't stand. You go from longer hours of light in the afternoon. Then suddenly you plunge into afternoon dreary premature darkness. Yup. I'm in favor of just staying daylight savings forever. FCK getting home after work and having just an hour or two of light to do stuff. No one needs or cares about having light in the morning. Passengers giving a round of applause after the airplane has landed. I have never been on a plane where this has happened. Seems like kind of a grim way to celebrate a safe landing though. Oh man it is like a community coming together was on a crazy fking turbulent flight during winter in street. Louis. Did all kinds of crazy g-force tricks we exploded with applause upon landing. All of us expressing thanks at once. I was on a crazy turbulent flight once. I literally thought we were going to die. I was near the front and really started to worry when I realized the flight attendants were strapped in. Holding hands. And saying the rosary. Not only did everyone clap at the end. Several people hugged the pilots on the way out and I still stay in touch with my seatmate. Because I totally thought I was going to die holding his hand. Wearing a tie to work. This is actually a lessening requirement in the professional world. I work at one of the top convention hotels in the Midwest. At first. I noticed our Asian guests not wearing ties in business meetings. Then. A lot of US West Coast groups, probably taking the lead from the Asians. Like many do. And now our own company has come out and said no more ties. I think from a psychology standpoint. You want to look familiar to your customers. If we wear ties and we sell to people who don't. It affects their willingness to trust by. Putting turn signals on BMWs. I saw a BMW driver use their indicators the other day. I'm going to write to the Vatican about it. Half their bulbs were broken and they'd flicked on the hazards to park in the middle of the road. Skipping the 13th floor and labeling it as the 14th in elevators. Along the same lines. Avoiding street numbers like 666. But that's different. I wanna live on 666 occult lane. We all do. But they don't have 666 as a street number in a lot of places. Open bracket. I work in a 666 building in a major city. Also notice we have a floor 13 so I guess we're not very superstitious. Wiping restaurant tables with a dirty rag. I worked at a Mexican chain restaurant for a while. The coastal Baja style place with the green logo. Famous for their fish tacos. And our cleaning rags looked like shti most of the time. We kept them submerged in some pretty concentrated quaternary sanitizer when we weren't using them. Though. There may have been some discarded salsa or guac embedded in the fibers. But it's sterile discarded salsa or guac embedded in the fibers. I would much prefer to eat at a table with a few sterile salsa particles than one coated with some sinister microbes left by a sticky handed kindergartner. Checking the shower bath before taking a dump in the toilet. My aunt does this. I always thought it was dumb. But she once found her kid hiding in the shower behind the curtain when she went in to take a shit. Scared her half to death. In most cases though I agree. It's pointless. Astrology. Anytime someone points out that Saturn is in retrograde in the sign of Terrace with Ra's moon. Really me. It doesn't mean anything. It's all stupid babel that pertains to nothing at all. Chakra stones. It's just minerals. It's just a stupid stone. 
Also Ryoki. Good grief. As far as tones go, I'm not sure specifically about chakra stones or whatever, but I know many people who maybe wear amethyst to calm them or what have you. While I don't believe the stone itself has any effect, the act of wearing it does. It's a placebo obviously but even if you don't believe in what is it energies or something, it can still work. Let's say you are about to give a presentation so you maybe carry a little chunk of amethyst in your pocket. Feeling it there can be a reminder to stay calm, confident, and relaxed before giving your presentation. I just think that's kinda neat and if it helps people cope with the increasingly stressful lives we lead. That's cool too. Writing cover letters. Look. I want to get rid of liked end resumes today. Do you really want me to write you a love letter that says how much I have dreamed of working for your company? The relevant info is in the resume. You know I'm seeking employment or I wouldn't have given you the resume. If I'm a good match a great place to get more information about me is during the interview. Dimming the running lights before engaging the jump drive. Back with the old villainy jump 1 and early jump 2 drives they needed every possible what to ensure those old drives wouldn't miss jump you some 30 par 6 out into the middle of nowhere without an atom of hydrogen in range. But today. The modern reactors have power to spare and actually have backup capacitors to make sure even if there is a power drop right at the time you engage the jump drive there will be more than enough power to charge the lanthanum grid. That being said. I still dim M. Call it a habit or a superstition. It just makes me feel safer. Those cringy roleplay scenarios companies do as a way to prepare you for a situation. My old company did this over a conference call. With branch managers from different districts, probably 15 or so people on the line. I could hear the disdain in their voice as they held down the vomit about having to do it. There are much more successful and viable ways to teach someone in management how to deal with a certain situation. All this does is create resentment and anxiety having to do this. I literally had to leave the room because I just felt so bad. It was made worse that the district's GM wouldn't let it go until they got it perfect. 30 minutes for something minor that could have been solved by saying do this when this situation arises again. Honestly think the DM was getting off on it. Blowing on dice for luck. Considering the previous outcomes of random generators. Such as dice. Discussing what would have happened if things were different. I play a lot of card and tabletop war games. And a big factor is the element of variance. But folk constantly attach luck to everything. I'm crap at rolling success. I would have won if we'd had one more turn each. Nope. All made up and serves no actual purpose. You don't learn or progress from looking back at an unfortunate outcome that's out of your control and placing an element of blame on bloody superstition. Changing your clothes daily. You can get away with just changing your undies for a few days and your undershirt. But why do I need to wear a new pair of jeans every day? Or a new jacket button up over shirt. I get called out all the time but it's quite ridiculous to retire clothing that is pretty clean. I mean if there is mud caked on it that you can't scrape off I get it. But otherwise your undies take the full blow of your bodily soils. They are like sheets you wear. Being expected to tip. Especially when you walk to the counter to order your food. Then have to walk back to the counter to get it. Especially when you pay with a credit card at the register and there is a space for the tip on your receipt. Then you have to feel like a DCK for drawing a line through it and rewriting the original amount. Looking at you firehouse subs. Who always gives me a fking pickle even though I clearly asked for no goddamned pickles. And who makes certain said fking pickle is touching my sandwich and leaching its disgusting pickle juices into the bread. Mandatory school pep rallies. At my school they locked the entire high school, around 700 students, in the gym and had us watch an entire game or cheer on a team going on to provincials the next day. I'm in Canada. Comma our school is insanely focused on sports. So these things were like sending the astronauts to the moon or something in that vein. Every exit was guarded by a teacher. And even if you needed to go to the bathroom one would have to accompany you and make sure no unwanted shenanigans happened. The funny part was that the gym's locker room wasn't watched at all. 
So more than a few times a few of my friends and I snuck out those doors and went down to Tim Hortons to wait out the hour and a half. Thankfully I've graduated now. So I'm not subject to it anymore. Edit. Most students in the school didn't care for the many sports we played. Aside from the ones who actually participated in them. Otherwise these things would be awesome and a great way to skip class. Late to the party. But this needs to be said, having kids start school at 8. 0 AM. It's been scientifically proven, just google the damn thing, that kids brains don't kick into gear until it gets closer towards noon. We have the entire system backwards. Since adults seemingly become more adjusted to waking up early as they age. Ever wonder why grandma and grandpa always wake up at the crack of dawn? I've worked at a school that decided to push their start time to 7. 30 am. Christ. If working adults are zombies without their coffee at 9. 0 am. How the hell do you expect kids to be awake, and learn, even earlier? It serves no real purpose. Other than being the established norm for decades. I'm sure we can figure out a better system. But that's obviously too much work to implement for us. Considering we, Americans, still can't even convert to metric. Making your bed. Having lived in a lot of rough camping conditions for field work. I've come to believe that pest control was the original reason to make a bed. And also was the reason that bed frames were invented in the first place to get the bed off the ground. If you tuck the sheets in tightly and also cover the whole bed with a bedspread. And then put the whole thing up on for legs. It is much less likely that mice. Roaches. Spiders. Centipedes etc will encounter the edges of the sheets trailing on the ground and end up crawling up them and getting in between the sheets. After some nasty moments with bugs getting into unmade cot beds at field sites. I always make the bed in field stations now. Especially. Where I'm living in the type of a penwood we support where critters can just come strolling right in all night long. But back home there are real walls. The place has no pests. And there is no reason to tuck in the sheets. Once the pest issue is gone I much prefer an untucked bed, so much more comfortable for my feet. And it makes the bed warmer. I do like feeling organized airing out the bed though. But that really only takes 30 seconds and doesn't have to involve tucking the sheets. I just grab the top sheet and blankets. Give them a big shake. Let them settle back down on the bed so they look straight. And then flip one corner back so it looks inviting. 30 seconds. Truly. My work has us clock in with a card. Which automatically enters our clock in time into their database. And automatically calculates how many sick vacation hours we accumulate through the day as well as any overtime earned that week. We then need to physically write how many hours a day we were there on a schedule sheet. If we used any sick or vacation time. We need to write on a separate sheet how many we used. What day and time we used them. And what we used it for. None of this needs to be done since clocking in on the time clock does it all automatically except for saying what the purpose was. Praying. It does provide an internal support. But no empirical effects. Praying in itself shows that you want to focus on something. Or can work as a helping hand in unhelpful situations. Saying that you've prayed for someone to succeed at work won't make a difference per se. But saying that you've prayed for them can help boost their confidence. All in all. It doesn't work. But can be helpful in harsh times for you to reflect upon your day. And a way to show support without actually doing anything at all. But can help the other person to get motivated for the task. All in all. It's a time consumption. And will help out psychologically. So as a conclusion it has no empirical purpose. But rather a byproduct of a psychological phenomenon. Taking vitamins. Unless you have a deficiency. You are contributing absolutely nothing to your health beyond a placebo. Having more vitamins doesn't make you more healthy. Either you have enough or you don't. And if you have enough. You don't need more. Posting a selfie on social media. The only reason people do it is to stroke their own ego. Unless you come up with a funny. Imaginative way to make a selfie or unless you're taking one together with somebody to save a memory. They're really all the same. Just your face. Over and over again. 
Other people only like them out of reciprocity because they want a like back whenever they do it. Or they do it because they want to get into the selfie taker's pants. In the UK a lot of part-time jobs are listed at 20 hours a week but nobody in their right mind would take 20 hours a week unless you didn't have financial responsibilities because you can still receive welfare and work 16 hours a week. To work anything more that isn't full time would leave any normal person unable to pay their rent. The thing that's really fked up is the people doing it must know what they are doing because the job center know that nobody would take it and the employer is probably doing it to weed out anybody on welfare. Only having hot taps in public toilets, unique UK problem? Dot. More often than not you can't keep your hands under them for more than 2 seconds without burning yourself. Fun fact. The temperature of the water you wash your hands with has practically no impact on the eventual cleanliness of your hands. The most important thing is how long you spend scrubbing with soap. For the water to do anything significant. It would have to be way too hot to touch. Hence why we boil things to sterilize them. Also. While we're at it. Those taps that you press down to activate and they stop flowing before you can get your hands under them. So you need to awkwardly hold it down with one hand and wash the other on its own and then switch. And the ones with motion sensors that can't detect your hands when they're under the friggin tap. A simple screw tap or maybe a pedal would be so much better. Tap rant over.